My name is Ben Edwards. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Earth Sciences at Dickinson College. And my research expertise is looking at volcano ice interactions or glacial volcanism. And so it's unique at this point in time to have two volcanoes that are both ice covered volcanoes that are showing signs of activity. So it's a very important time for us to study these volcanoes and learn more about what happens to ice and snow on top of a volcano when it's erupting. Calbuco is one of the most active volcanoes in Chile, um, but it hasn't had a big eruption since 1972. And so this eruption seemed to have come without a, not a lot of warning. Um, it's Villarica volcano, which is just about 140 kilometers north of Calbuco, has been erupting since March and um, in continuous and, and episodic ways. So everyone's been focused on Villarica. Calbuco in the late 1800s, about 1893, had one of the three or four largest historic explosive eruptions in um, the history of, of monitoring Chilean volcanoes. Like a lot of the volcanoes in Chile, it's got snow and, and ice cover on top of it. So when it erupts, it's not just that there's ash that can go quite a ways um, in different directions. The ash fall oftentimes eventually goes into Argentina because Calbuco is just west of Argentina. But because it's covered with snow and ice, that material can melt during an eruption and produce volcanic mud flows called the horrors. Mud flows can be very catastrophic. A big eruption in 1985 at Nevada del Ruiz volcano at La Jara killed about 20 some thousand people. So they're very devastating. They can travel quite a ways away from the volcano, much further generally than something like a lava flow will go. So from these kinds of eruptions, you not only have volcanic ash going into the atmosphere and then falling down, um, and in fact, Villarica volcano, which itself is still smoking, is now being covered with ash from Calbuco volcano. So you have to worry about airlines and, and uh, local flights um, don't want to go through the ash, but then you also have this somewhat more pressing danger to people in the surrounding communities. Anyone that lives lower elevation in the volcano along rivers and streams that are coming off the volcano could be in danger from these volcanic mud flows. The, the two previous eruptions, Kordenkaya and, and Chaiten, actually caused some problems with wildlife. Um, some of these volcanoes have a fair amount of fluorine that gets deposited with the ash as, as gas stuck to the ash particles. And when, when those ash particles cover the ground, livestock and wild animals eat the ash and they can get high levels of fluorine in their system, in their bodies, and that can lead to bone deformities and problems with joints and can actually cause mortality. So some of the recent studies that have been published in the last two or three years have looked at things like native deer in Argentina, and they do see that there are some signs of negative impact from fluorine associated with the volcanic ash from these recent eruptions. So it, oftentimes it's a little bit hard to tell how far spread the effects are gonna be, and sometimes it takes a few years even to realize exactly what's happened, how the environment's been changed by an eruption.